wanted to preface this next little video uh, that Tim put together about some of the you know other phases of this uh, ADU in Springfield. Um, keep in mind this building is intended to be simple and easy to maintain and um, cost-effective uh, for you know everybody. Um, anywho, he includes some uh, information that the plumber provides about the components they use, why they use them, uh, and the phases at which it you know the building gets put together. And then we look at some of the insulation. Um, Tim talks about um, you know the R values of the insulation um, and whatnot. And keep in mind all these components have to be uh, in the walls and inspected before it gets covered up by uh, sheetrock and there's a section that talks about that and I talk about it. And uh, we get to listen to the uh, finish carpenter a little bit about hanging doors and some of the problems you run into with uh, making things look good when you know the world isn't perfect. We get to listen to the painter just a little bit. They put some red paint on this ADU. Um, that covers a little bit different than other kinds of paint. Um, you know we have a motto uh, do your best and call for the rest. That's what uh, painters are in charge of. Um, making it look good. Tim takes us on the interior for a, a look at the finished product. So I, I believe this, the project was a success. Um, I believe he has tenants in there now. Hi all, this is Rick with New Tech Plumbing. Uh, we're at the AD units in Springfield. Uh, doing some plumbing today. Um, the underfloor plumbing has been completed and signed off by the inspector. Uh, the building has been sheeted. Uh, floors been put in, walls have been framed up, uh, and right now we are doing what we call the top out portion of, of the plumbing system. Well, that means that we're putting all of the plumbing into the walls. You can see right here, this is the kitchen, for example. This is going to be, this is our water lines stuffed out on each side of the drain for the kitchen and then we run a vent right up through the roof. Other ports of the plumbing on this are going to be installing the shower unit, which this is the back part of the tub shower unit. We're getting ready to set this portion of the, shower, of the plumbing right now. If you follow me around here, you can, uh, you can kind of get a glimpse of the inside of the tub unit as we're we're cutting off the feet to get it nice and level so it sits in nice and straight and level and the water flows directly to the drain. Over here you can see more vent piping and water piping for the water heaters. The vents go completely up through the roof protecting the health of the people inside the unit. And uh, um, once we are done with this we will have in another inspection, we have to fill up the waste and the water, full of water, and then we have an inspector come out, we check for leaks, and make sure everything's up to code. Um, and then from there, we go to the finished plumbing. That'll happen when all the drywall's done, and all the cabinets are in, and the electrical's done. Show you how we do a hose bib on new construction at the ADU in Springfield. This here is a PEX style Wurzbo hose bib. It's a pier hose bib that we will take the handle off and this will actually be a hose bib that is tamper resistant and has a key made for it so the manager of the unit or the apartment complex can use that um, instead of just anybody coming by and use it. It's really simple to install. We install a piece of PEX pipe on it and we push it back in the wall like that and then we'll screw it off to that part of it. Let's go inside and see the inside piping. Inside PEX loop, we call this the service loop for the hose bib. As you can see, the loop goes down and the pipe actually can go outside 
to replace or repair the hose bed, and then when you push it back in, it comes back up and creates a loop. We call that a service loop, and that's how we do hose beds on new construction. Here's our shower unit installed. There's our shower valve installed for the rust plumbing. Here's the toilet flange. The toilet flange installed to set the toilet on during finish. This is the water stub out for the PEX angle stop that'll provide water to supply the toilet. Over here is our sink, bathroom sink stub out, and our two water lines for the faucet. This is all the rough plumbing in the wall for future finished plumbing for the lab. Behind here, we will have a water heater. This water heater is gonna be a new heat pump style water heater, which are 97 to 99% efficient. It uses the ambient air temperature to preheat the water coming into the, the water heater, which helps reduce electrical cost. Here, PEX loop that we talked about. On the rough plumbing, we use Upinor PEX tubing for a water distribution. This piping system has a 25 year warranty on it, which you can't get any warranty on any copper fittings or anything. Um, copper, that's why we went away from copper. Uh, this tubing has been around since the 1940s in Europe. We started using this particular brand of tubing in like in the early 1990s. It, uh, it actually has memory and will expand seven times its original size. It's a cross-linked polyethylene, which makes it really tough and, and really consistent once it's, it's used for the water system. So here is the auto wash, and this is what we call where we hook up the wash machine unit. Um, the drain is right here. The hot and cold water supplies are right here. Right now I'm hooking up a hose so we can test this unit. Um, I'm hooking up to the cold side. The cold side is under pressure. Um, by hooking this up, we will run this slot, turn it on and run this line over to the kitchen where we have another line hooked up to the waste and we will fill this waste pipe with water clear through the roof until it comes out the roof we'll check every fitting for leaks so here is an air balloon that we have down inside the pipe we have to fill that air balloon up and it creates a seal so we can test the system inside the house this blocks all the water from coming out down the sewer pipe we also have on test we have to put nail plates where every penetration that is less than an inch and a half through the wood is. And what these do is protect the piping from drywallers putting screws through our pipes. So other than that, you now have basically every component of the rough plumbing for this ADU. This is Tim Olgeen. What you're seeing now is the wall insulation installed. Once the rough plumbing and rough electrical inspections are completed, then the wall insulation can be installed. Look down to the bottom right on the floor. The inspector wanted the bottom plate cocked for a tighter seal around the inside perimeter of the entire house. You'll notice the foam the insulators put in at the bottom and top plates to seal up any penetrations the house has. This is to keep out air and possibly any pests that might penetrate the house. The attic insulation is put in after drywall is installed. We waited to put in the underfloor insulation until we had the roof on. It cost a couple hundred dollars more to have the insulators crawl the floor, but we had rain in June 
and it would have been a problem if we had installed the underfloor insulation beforehand. Insulation is rated by its R value, which measures the resistance to heat flow. We went with R21, which is the standard R value for wall insulation. Progress has proceeded on the interior, and uh, Tim took some video of uh, the home being insulated. Um, I'm sure he probably did some of it being wired and plumbed and whatnot. Uh, anyway, it has been, the drywall has been installed. Um, the sheets of sheetrock have been hung on the wall uh, and the ceiling. That's what they might, you might hear it called, uh, hanging drywall. Um, drywall usually has two phases, the hanging of the drywall on the, the structure and then the finishing, the taping and the texturing of the drywall. So it becomes real apparent, um, you know, I, I always talk about, uh, you know, why we put framing members where we put them. Uh, a lot of it has to do with what you're going to apply to them. You want to make sure the edges of all the panels are supported. What that means is that when you have a sheet of sheetrock up here on the, on the ceiling, on the lid, uh, these happen to be 12 foot long pieces. Uh, when you get to the end of that sheet, you want it, the end of that sheet to be able to land on a framing member, which means it has backing, which means you can screw the edge up to uh, something, wood. Uh, and then the next sheet will be, you know, also on that same member and, and those seams need support. They need uh, backing on them, if you want to call it that. Anyway, it just becomes clear that's why we do that. So these sheets, um, you know, you'll also notice, especially on the ceiling, that the, that the ends are staggered, you know, just like we did on the roof sheet, just like we do on the exterior wall sheet or the floor, you know, the deck. Um, we stagger those ends. Anyway, I'm sure that this sheetrock up on the lid, the ceiling, is half inch sheetrock. It used to be that it, you know, the lid had to be 5 8 sheetrock because um, of the span. The supports are on two foot centers. So for that not to sag, it needed to be beefier material than the walls. The walls are, have always been half inch sheetrock. Anyway, today we have this lightweight, stronger than it used to be, sheetrock and we use half inch on the lid and it's even marked on here that you can use it for ceilings walls and ceilings there's a date on there and time code anyway it's stronger it's lighter it's more better um, for the ceilings it's nice to be able to use half inch everywhere you'll also notice that the screwing pattern you know all the sheetrock uh, we used to nail sheetrock to the walls that's archaic anymore we use screws screws do not back out and uh, create space there. Uh, anyway, notice how many screws they put in per sheet. We build these, the height of these exterior walls and the interior walls, uh, a certain height for a reason. And notice with, they put the lid up first, that's real common, put the sheetrock up on the lid, then the wall sheets get bumped up to them, it holds the lid up, holds the ceiling up, the sheetrock on the ceiling. Um, and then another four foot sheet underneath that top sheet. You start doing math there and it needs to be a certain height so that everything works out perfectly. I believe the stud length that we used here was 92 and 5 eighths. That, those are the, the common framing members in the wall. So you start doing the, doing the figuring in your head. Okay, 92 and 5 eighths for a stud. We've got an inch and a half plate at the bottom, two inch and a half plates at the top. That's four and five, four and a, four and a half inches added to 92 and five eighths gets us to an overall wall height of 97 and an eight, right? That lets us put a half inch of sheetrock on the top, eight foot of sheetrock on the wall, and a little wiggle room on the bottom. In uh, finished carpentry, you have to deal with the inconsistencies of the walls, and you have to. Uh, Improvise often, but the general idea is, is that you want to give a nice clean reveal for how your trim fits around the doors and windows. Well, and the finished part of the finished carpenter's job is that uh, when you set doors, you may have to set them in such a fashion so that they close, close smoothly 
and they're not flush with the sheetrock walls. So you wind up with a problem when it comes time to install the trim around your doors where you have the wall sticking out farther than the door jam. And one way of remedying that is to take your hammer and um, knock the sheetrock in or actually take your utility knife and remove sheetrock so that the trim sits in tight to the jam. So let's see. If you'll notice there's a gap as you come straight across the face of the sheetrock you'll see a gap of about an eighth inch to three sixteenths of an inch between the surface of the sheetrock and where the door jam actually sits. You have to do something about that so your trim sets properly. of red paint on this building and um, let it set for probably three or four hours and I'll end up having to do exactly what I'm doing now again obviously we won't have to mask it or anything like that so I'm gonna do three sections at a time because when I get up on the ladder that's how many I can do so stand back and hope no overspray gets <laughs> okay <laughs> Here is the completed exterior of the ADU. We put in an irrigation system so the grass stays green even in the summer. The ADU is in the historic district so we had to have wood windows and wood siding. Let's take a peek inside. We went with vinyl plank flooring throughout most of the house and brown cove base molding along the bottom perimeter. In the living room, there's a coat closet with a small shelf. The kitchen comes complete with the refrigerator and stove, along with enough cabinets for kitchen wear and storage, a dishwasher, is an added bonus. The laundry room has a heat pump water heater which takes heat from the air to heat the water. This also produces cool air in the summer. An electric only mode can be used in the winter. The hallway closet provides some storage space. The simple bathroom has a vanity along with a shower tub.
Both bedrooms have carpet along with brown cove base molding. This bedroom also has a mirror closet. Here is the second bedroom. The heating system utilizes cadet wall heaters with individual thermostats. They will automatically turn off and on to maintain a preset temperature. The second bedroom has a walk-in closet. Both closets have lights installed inside the closets.